uh, he does entrust just means you gave them the responsibility for a test you know you know you uh, Somalia, Somalia I don't know I don't know you this is an answer of somebody who have a mental illness let me tell you why hmm. guys Somalia he have the answer for you we have the answer let me show you what he said the answer is right there right clear you know like I mean come on you cannot deny it ah. so look what he said he does entrust just means you gave them the responsibility for a test between two bracket and they failed but uh, uh, you know that when you use certain word that word have a meaning you cannot say it means it just means trust is a trust there's a billion word in Arabic can be used to describe what you are saying and you Muslim you claim that the Quran is a perfect Arabic so how in the world Allah is using the wrong word if you want to say something else if Allah he meant what you are saying he shall not use in trust and when you say for a test this is the most stupid test because Allah is risking his book you see it is my responsibility as God not as they are Jews Jews are people they are a human isn't the Quran confirmed that all human are sinners how you trust a sinner you do not need to test human being fail always did Allah trust the Muslims in the protection of the Quran give me the answer if Allah trusted the Jews as a test well he should give the Quran to be trusted to the Muslims look what the Quran says and this is why the Muslims they do not collect the Quran the Quran says inna alayna jama'uhu wa Quranahu. It is on us to collect it and recite in it. It's not for it's not on you. Chapter 75, verse number 17. It is for us to collect it It's for us to recite it. You see here they add Muhammad that's false. There's no Muhammad there. So the Quran making it clear that the one who will collect the book is Allah. Muslims, who is the one who collected the book? Any Muslim can answer? Who is a Muslim can answer us? Who is the one who collected the Quran? Was it Allah or Muslims? including Uthman who burned the other Quran. Who is a Muslim? He have little dignity to answer. Did Allah keep his promise to collect the Quran? Uh, Thom, I just give you the reference. You are asking for Tafsir. Tafsir, they will quote this book. They will quote Ibn Mas'ud. Ibn Mas'ud is a companion of the Prophet, the false Prophet. So what do you mean Tafsir? This is more important than Tafsir book. Any Muslim can answer me. Who is the one who collected the Quran? So now we trust the Quran that Allah, he said that I will collect the Quran. Did Allah keep his promise to collect the Quran? Any Muhammadan? Did Allah keep his promise to collect the Quran? All of us we knew that the Muslims they start collecting the Quran after Muhammad's death. 
all of us we knew that Uthman ibn Affan he burned the Quran he burned many Quran and this is the weird the Muslim they say that uh, uh, if you burn the Quran that's haram and they will go crazy but the first one who burned the Quran is Uthman so it is the Muslims who collected the Quran and there was many Quran to the point they start burning them and until now there's many Quran so when Allah he says it is on us to collect it us who who is a Muslim want to help us my friend Yaakov didn't you see I have a topic I just started answering something just wait Who is a Muslim can answer? It is on us to collect the Quran. Who is talking and who is us? And did Allah collect the Quran? So do you see how the Quran failed its own promise? How you Muslim you claim that the Quran is protected and then the Quran is a promise to be collected by Allah, not by you. Who of you Muslims can tell me where we can find the Quran which is collected by Allah? Any Muhammadan? So do you see how Islam created a test and always Islam failed its own test so Allah he entrusted the Jews and the word of trust means trust it's not a test and if you say to me it's a test well that's mean Allah he do not know the result of the test because he used the word in trust so his trust was false same time if Allah he knew that the Jews are going to corrupt the book and yet he entrusted the Jews to protect the book. That means Allah intentionally decided to corrupt his own book. Do you understand? If I know that by giving you this book, and I trust you to protect the book, and I am God who can see tomorrow, I can see the future, and I know that you will corrupt the book is it that means that i'm a partner of the corruption and i am the one who allow it and actually i'm the one who plan for it so do you see how stupid the whole thing here if you ask the muslims can the corruption of the quran of the quran or the torah or the gospel can happen without permission of allah what the muslim they will say they will say everything is by permission of Allah. Everything. Therefore, if there is any corruption happened, it was Allah who did it. Allah is Satan. And who is going to hurt more or get hurt more than the one who corrupt his own book? You see, I have my books. Somebody, he added something to it. Who is the first one who was going to be unhappy with that? Me. This is not what I say. And if I give a book, and I convince people that this is a book of God. And then I allow people to play with my book. And I am God. Now I am misleading generations by allowing it to happen. Why? Because those people, whoever come after those people who corrupted the book, well, they believe. They are victims. They believe in the corrupted book, but for them it's not corrupted. Additional to that, why the Christians... When they come after the Jews and the disciple of Jesus did not say that the Bible, the Torah is corrupted. Why they accept it? Why the Christian and now they accept it? The story is very simple. 
Muhammad, he could not find any proof of himself. Uh, Hamoud saying, why it does matter to you, you will simply deny our answer. Let me ask you, my friend, what, what do you mean why, you, why, why, uh, why it's a, a matter for you? You Muslim keep saying that the, bo the book of Allah, the Torah, is corrupted. The book of Allah is the Injil is corrupted. I had to take an opportunity and to laugh at the Quran and the founder of the Quran. Because if Allah, he sent the book, and then Allah, he trusted the Jews to protect the book. And then Allah, he decided not to protect the book. And then you, because of your foolishness, to come to me speaking about my book. When the whole Quran keeps saying, this is the book of Allah. So we should love at who? We should love at Allah. Look what you say. You will simply deny our answer. Who, you know, I'm not waiting for your answer. We are loving. You Can you answer anyway? Allah trusted the Jews. Can you answer? You cannot. Let me ask you, why if Jesus is God, his apostle turned him? He failed as a teacher. He failed as God in your book. This is the most stupid answer. I'm just showing you now. Here we go. Your God, Allah, he entrusted the Jews. They failed him. Jesus trusted nobody. Jesus even told the one who will, de who will deny him, you will deny me. He told the one, you will betray me, you will betray me. <laughs> Your God, he trusted. And then they gave him a finger. Jesus told the guy who is going to betray him, you will betray me. It wasn't a surprise. Christian, is that correct? Is it true that Jesus, before those things happened, he told his disciples, each one of them, what he would do? Each one of them. So when we laugh, we are laughing at the religion. There's a God, he sent a book, and then he didn't want to protect his book. What's wrong with this God? So when you Muslim, you say the Bible is corrupted, we have to laugh, because this is supposed to be the book of Allah. Your God is mentally ill. He sent the book and he decided to, to, to let the book go. Why? And not only that, if the Torah was corrupted, how many years Allah, he waited to send somebody to tell us? <laughs> was your God, Allah, taking a nap? Hmm? The Christian, the Muslim, they say, that the one who corrupted the Bible is Paul. Wonderful. So Allah, he waited 600 years. And then even when, when Muhammad, he said, not a single time he mentioned Paul. Actually the opposite. If you go to chapter 36, it says that there's the three messengers that went to the city of Antioch and those are the messengers of, of, of Jesus. They are messengers of who? Of Jesus. Allah, he sent, the verse is so clear. Allah, he sent two messengers first. And they rejected both of them and they accused them to be liars. Then Allah, he stringed them with the third messenger. If we go and read Ibn Kathir or many Islamic books, we will find that the third messenger is Paul. <laughs> is Paul. And not only that, the Muslims' books agree that Paul, he, he saw Jesus. And even Jesus, he made him blind. Shall we go to Ibn Kathir right now and we laugh? But every single Muslim, he says, that Paul is the one who corrupted the Bible. But their stupid book says the opposite. Their stupid book says 
that Paul was a person who hated the Christians. He wanted to kill them. So the Messiah, he appeared to him in the way to Damascus. And then he turned to be blind. And then Paul, he prayed to the Messiah, asking for forgiveness. And then the Messiah, he forgave him, and he gave him his vision again. Shall we go read? <laughs> Let us go to the, angel, the, the English version of Ibn Kathir, which is not the same as the Arabic one. Chapter 36, verse number 14. And the Muslim, they will say, CP, this is the hadith, the narration of the story is da'if. The Mimi Hijab, it's fabricated. You remember Mimi Hijab when he spoke to me? He started reading this one. I was reading a different book. I said, you eat it. I'm quoting a different book now. <laughs> My God, he just denied man to betray him. You have to prove it. It's your God who destined man to portray him. Isn't it you Muslims? You believe that everything in Islam is destiny? Look, 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 just to show you how stupid this cult is. A Muslim is complaining about destiny. Now you deserve to be banned. Don't come here again. I have no time for kids. Isn't it you stupid Abdul? Believe that everything is destiny of Allah? Your bad deed and your good deed is a destiny. Isn't it you, Muslims? You believe that Adam, when he commits sin, it was written in the book of Allah. He destiny his fate 40 years before he created him. There's no destiny in the Bible. The only destiny in the Bible is there's heaven and hell. You can't choose third option if we can call it destiny. But as long as there's a choice between two, it's not destiny. That's why Jesus says, not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my father, but the one who do his will. So if you choose to do your own will, you're free, but you'll go to hell like your prophet. So now let us go to Ibn Kathir and see what Ibn Kathir says. About this verse. Let us close those ones. Chapter 14, sorry, chapter 36, verse number 14. Every stupid idiot in the internet, he keep attacking Paul from the Muslims. Then we go to their book, we will find that Paul is a messenger of Allah. And not only he is a messenger of Allah, he is the strongest between them. And he was sent to the city of Antioch. Let us read together. Where is uh, the third one? Huh. Read with me carefully. So those messengers, they were sent to where? To the city, to the people of Antioch. Is that making uh, ringing a bell for you? And they were the messengers of the Messiah. Now they are saying here, the Christian they claim. So we cannot take it serious, the Christian claim. But it says here actually, this is the view of Abu Potato, not the Christians. So he agree, this is what his view. And then we continue. Let us try to find who are they, those three. Read carefully. So we uh, uh, reinforce them with the third. Meaning, this is now Ibn Kathir. We support them and we string them with the third messenger. Ibn Juraj narrated from Wahab Ibn Sulaiman, from Shu'aib al-Jabi. The name of the first two is Shem'un, Simon. And the second one is Yohanna, John. And the name of the third is Bulos, which means Paul. And the city was Antioch. Do you see it? Do you see it, people? Do you see why we Arab Christian we laugh at this religion? 
In their TV, they insult Paul. In their book, they say Paul was a messenger of God. But look what happened now. Anyone knows what is the consequence of this stupid statement now? If Paul and John and Simon Peter, they are the messenger of God. But who is the one who sent them? Who is the one who sent them? This is Jesus. Is that correct? So how they are the messenger of God and Jesus is a prophet. Prophet cannot make you a messenger. He himself is a messenger. He don't have the authority to make you a prophet or a messenger. And the, the chapter there is speaking about those people doing miracles. They are doing miracles. So in order for those three to be the messengers sent by Jesus, Jesus have to be God. And not only that, do you see how important those names are? That's mean, whatever John and Peter and Paul said, is very authentic for they are chosen by God and do you see that the Muslim agree that they were sent to the city of Antioch Muhammad is copying the Bible and this is where the Christian were called a Christian for the first time Well, the, the Muslim, when they say they preserve, it's mean word by word. But as you see, this is a lie. Even the Quran itself saying it clearly that the Quran is not preserved. The Quran itself saying that. How is that? Here we go. Read and love. Chapter 2, verse 106 says that Allah make the Muslim forget the Quran. <laughs> And Allah will make the Muslim forget the Quran so he can send a better Quran or similar Quran. And this is why, why this happened? Because Muhammad, he cannot remember to recite the verses twice correctly. So in order to give himself excuse, he said, don't worry. If Allah, look, look at the first translation, if we super, supersede any verses, why Allah want to supersede any verses? Or cause it to be forgotten. Why Allah want to cause the Quran to be forgotten? I mean, have you ever heard of somebody? He sent a book and he caused it to forget his book. Imagine Jesus. He says something to thee in the morning. And at night he says to you, forget it. Can you believe it? And not only that. He asks you to forget it, and he says to you, I'm going to make something similar for you. Have you ever heard of a stupid thing like this? So you have a house from three bedroom. Allah, he will burn it for you. And Allah will say to you, I will build something similar. So why you, why you, why you destroy the first house if the second house would be the same? And there's more garbage in this verse. This, is, this verse, by the way, is a priceless. And it, for, for very one word is a priceless. Do you see the word better? Do you see it? How in the world that there is a God, he can write better book than his book? <laughs> Do you understand what I'm trying to say to you? Supposedly, Allah is God. And the one is talking is Allah. Okay, wonderful. How in the world Allah is going to write a book better than his book. Anyone can explain? The word better mean that Allah, he admit 
that his Quran is worse and there is better. And then you ask yourself, was Allah in the state of non-perfection when he wrote the first book? Do you understand what I'm saying? This is a chapter 2, verse 106. If there is better, Allah is the one who's talking. This is the, and you see, this is why I don't, I don't I, when the Muslims say the Quran is preserved, I like that because then we can love more. The Muslim, they cannot say this is wrong. Uh, somebody added, uh, no, it's preserved. I love it. But this is alone to prove to me that this is cannot be from God. Can Allah speak better than Allah? Can Allah write better than Allah? If Allah is the one who made the first Quran, how Allah is going to make better Quran than the first Quran? This is why we say Islam is lovable. This is cannot be God speaking. This is stupid. You know, this is a guy saying stupid things. You see, I can say to you, I will write a better book than my previous book, which means I will give it more effort. I will study harder. I will research more. Try to give more reference. It can happen because a human being can improve himself and, you know, he gets smarter or edu more education or more skills, or more skills in writing. But we are talking about the perfect God. So if this is the scenario that Allah is going to write a book better than the previous book, that means Allah was not perfect when he wrote his first book. And he is not going to write a perfect book tomorrow too. Why? Because it is just better. Not the best. Better is a word you use to elevate one upon the other one. Is that correct? That means the first Quran was not equal to the better Quran. Then how in the world Allah he wrote a Quran which is not good? This is why we laugh. Can you show proof for only one God? Why only one? Uh, big Shama. My friend, I don't care really if the God is one or two or five or seven. That is not really will make any different. Show you a proof about what? If there is somebody believe in seven gods, ten God, twenty gods, and they all exist, then he's right and you are wrong. So when people like you know Muslims they focus too much about the number, like one God. We believe in one God and think he think when he says such a word. Like he is a supreme, he is a strong in the position. For me, it is lovable because it doesn't matter really if it's one or two or three or five or seven or whatever. If they are exist, they are exist. Can I change the number? Guys, do you understand what I'm saying? We don't accept God because he's one. What if he's seven? What if he, what if there's a million God? We don't have a choice to you know, they are God. <laughs> the question is are they true or not and I think our friend here is a is a Hindu so this is not the challenge for any one of us because who care about the number numbers doesn't make you better less or more God have a qualification and his first qualification is his ability. So if you can bring me a million God and they can create universe like this and they can create a humans and animals and trees, well, they are God then.
So the challenge a human being he face is not about the numbers of God. Like you as a Hindu, as I heard Sadhguru, he said that Hindus, they believe they have a 35 million God. 35 million. The number for me is weird. And like why they stop with number 35. But you can say the same. Why you stop number number one? But it's not really the number what will make the God of Hinduism is false. It is the belief itself. Like you have a temple for rats, you have, uh, you know, uh, things doesn't make sense, like, you know, in reincarnation, the good person, you know, if you are a bad person, you will come as a bad animal. If there's a bad animal and good animal, animal is an animal. And then we find that there's Hindus, they worship gods who they are rats. A god become a rat? I thought if you have a good karma, you will turn to be a better creature. So how God become a rat? So when we reject Hinduism, we don't reject it because of the 35 million God, but we reject it because nothing makes sense there. The vegetarian, the vegetation, and etc. You know, like, do you know that even plants are not vegeta vegetarian? Do you know that? Even plants, they eat beef. If you don't believe me, get some meat and bury it under your tomato and you will see how the tomato will go crazy. How the plant will flourish. So Hinduism is a philosophy. It's not really anything except philosophy and philosophy with no logic. Islam is, on the other hand, I believe it took a lot of things from, from the Hindus. As an example, a Hindu person, he believes in a bad karma and a good karma, correct? Is that correct? Okay. If a person, he is a, you know, he have a bad karma in life, karma mean action. He will come in the coming life as lower creature. Lower creature. If he is a person have a good karma, he will come in a better creature. Muhammad he adopted the same teaching of the Hindus. Muhammad believed in reincarnation of a human being from human to animals and from animals to human. Look what Muhammad said. This hadith we cannot find it in English. Let us find. Let's try to find it in different form. According to Muhammad, uh, let us see. Here we go. According to Muhammad, a person who is a murderer for Allah, he will come back in the heaven. He will live again in the heaven. And he will, his, his soul, will be given the body of a green bird. And those green birds will be living, hanging themselves in the chandelier. And this chandelier is hanged on the throne of Allah. Do you see it? So here you ask yourself, who is the Hindu? The Hindu or Muhammad? Do you see it? Those who they are killed, they are murdered for the sake of Allah. Allah, He will put their spirit in a corpse 
of a green bird. What they call those green birds in India? Parrot? Oh, this is Hinduism. People, isn't it? This is Hinduism. And now, supposedly, Allah is spoiling them and He made them a green bird. But look what happened. How this guy, He promised them a thousand times that you will have and you will F millions of women. How He is a bird and there is women waiting for Him. Do you see the stupidity? How you promised them that there is a lot of women waiting for you to sleep with them and then you go to heaven you find yourself a green bird how you will sleep with those women you will use your peak kukuruku so to my our friends here who is the hindu i say to you uh muhammad obviously is copying from your belief many things and the proof is right in front of our face this person he have a very good action he, he died for the sake of Allah he was getting some Christians some Jews and now Allah is going to reward him time for the payment how Allah will reward the Muslim guy who died for his sake Allah will make him a green bird. Happy ending. <laughs> and the funny it says a uh, green bird, maybe a chicken. Not necessarily this. Maybe it's a chicken. It can be a chicken is green. It says a green bird. He didn't say what kind of bird. And what this guy will be hanging under the throne of Allah? He will say, Takbir? 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 Hummus? Shish kebab? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? What? An, this, is, this is not a happy ending. So the poor guy, he joined jihad, he joined Al-Qaeda, he joined ISIS, he committed suicide. He you know he he lost his life, and then you make him a bird. This is the end. And your wife in, in the in like so a uh, 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 a guy from Hamas. He died fighting the Jews. He is going to be a bird. So his wife in Earth, she is saying, "Man, my husband now is a green bird." Can you talk to me, honey? Hello, honey. Hey, honey, talk to me. Hello, honey. Hey, Tony, welcome. By the way, if you say hello and I did not answer you, I don't, I'm not ignoring you, but you know, we have a topic. And as you see, it's very important, the bird. This is the happy ending. He will get, he will become a, um, you know, why Muhammad did not say he will become a dog? I mean, what difference is going to make? It's an animal anyway. And suppose to now the Muslim says, Alhamdulillah, I will be a green bird. What about stay as a human? Which one is better? How this guy is going to drink wine? Isn't it the Quran promised him a river of wine? A green bird drinking wine in a cup. Isn't the Quran promising to drink in a cup? So you are a bird and you are drinking a cup. Isn't the Quran promise you that you will wear a green silk made in Persia? So now you are a bird and you are wearing green silk? That is messed up. I mean, when Muhammad he made up a lie, his lies hit the sky. They are so high. 
hashish, hummus, falafel, I mean, you name it. You don't know what this guy is eating when he say things. And look, Muhammad, he insists that they will be hanging on a chandelier. That's deep. Not in a not in a branch. Not. I mean, put him in the at least in the wood. Let him have fun. You want to put him now? You made him a bird, and you made him under the eyes of Allah in the chandelier. What about you? Let the guy go have fun in the heaven. So now for eternity, you are hanged under the eyes of Allah, and Allah is farting on you. Let him go, let him have fun. Now he is a bird. Maybe he will find a spouse, a bird like him, female bird. You know, they are like flirting now. Like, do you like me? Do you, do you? Do you love me? Do you, do you? Do you hate me? Bird. And then, brother, look, 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 it says here. Look, look how the story is getting complicated. Uh, here. It says in the crops of a green bird. It's not you. You will be a green bird. You wish. He is using a crops of birds who they are already exist. And he insert your soul inside them. This is remind me of hot dog. I told this story before. You know, first time I came to the state, I went to a church, and the guy in the church, very nice people, you know, very friendly. Uh, one guy in the church, he want to take me around to show me the town. So he said, "Do you like to eat?" It was like noon time almost. I said, "Yeah, sure." You know, he was angry. He said, "Let us eat hot dogs." And I was saying to myself, what he said? Did he say really hot dogs? And I was looking at him, I mean, do this guy really eat dogs? You know? And then I start saying to him, you know what? I'm not really hungry. I will eat later. It's okay. Let us go around and, you know, I will go home soon. You know? He says, what happened a second ago? You said you want to eat, you know? He didn't know that. I was shocked, you know? He just told me when I eat dogs. I don't care. I don't want to eat head dogs. I don't want to eat uh, cold cats. I want to eat a green bird. It took me some time to find out that it's hot dogs. I mean, it's very weird. Why do you call it hot dogs? If, if there's no dogs involved. Anyway, eh, you know, this is what happened to you when you are like very uh, knowledgeable in English. So Allah will insert your soul inside a hot dog, a green bird crops and those birds they are hanged in a lamp suspended from the throne which go where they wish in paradise <sighs> brother those birds they do not need to fly the chandelier will fly. I mean, what a lazy bird. So you spend your life as a bird. Going around in paradise, full of Abdul having sex, and you are the only one who is just watching. And the excuse is that Allah now, He favor you and He made you a green bird. Somebody give this one to Sad Guru. You know Sad Guru? In India, he will love it. He will make a story of it, he will, and he will make himself look smart, you know, because this sad guru, he bring a bunch of idiot, and he said, sit down, on your ass, relax. Close your eyes. Now, let the bad energy come out. The bad energy, and by the way, don't forget the donation too, come out. And we have an envelope, you can put the money there. Let the bad energy and the, the, uh, uh, let one of the girls come and take the donation, okay? And let the bad energy come out. And please don't close your eyes when the donation collection is coming. You know, open your eyes to give the money. And uh, relax. And now 
I want all of you to raise your bum because this is how you can relax and now let the bad energy come from your bum all the negative energy keep only the positive energy and don't forget the donation by the way and now and then the guy he keep talking about accepting each other being nice to each other refusing the bad energy if somebody didn't agree with you don't get angry learn the acceptance learn how to suppress the bad energy i made a video about him 15 minutes after he went to youtube and he reported me it turned to be that all the bad energy in the world is in his ass i mean at least wait for 20 minutes 15 minutes they went to the channel of Sadhguru. they told them that this guy he made a video against him he went to youtube and he reported my video and he is the guy who spent his day talking about accepting each other if somebody disagree with you why you get angry because you have an echo inside you because you don't want to accept that you can be wrong why you get angry try to accept even if he is wrong because it's possible that he's right. Don't worship the inner inside you. Bad energy is our problem. This is why the Lord, he says, be aware of false teachers. From their fruits, you shall know them. Correct? Mm. anyway I hope you guys you get uh, happy today because if you convert to Islam now and you die for the sake of Allah you will become a bird uh, and look look at not only this look look at this conversation here uh, here it says that the Lord looked down at them Allah he looked down at those murder who became bird now And he said to them, whether they desire anything, they say, look at this, look, look. They reply, what they could wish when they can go anywhere they like in paradise. If, 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 if. It looks like only those birds can go. The rest are not. <laughs> and then he does that with them three times. Allah, he repeat the same question three times. Look, this is Sadhguru. Sadhguru, he say, what do you like me to do for you? You say, well, what more we want than going everywhere in the paradise? Sadhguru, he is not convinced with the answer. He asks you the same question again. What do you like me to do to you you say to him again what more we like to do more than we can go anywhere we like in paradise he is not convinced and always all the questions and answers in islam have to repeat it three times and remember islam is against trinity but why allah he have to ask the question three times allah knows best so Allah, the third time he asked them the same question. And then when they see that they will not be left alone, like what the heck? Sadhguru is losing his patience. Allah is, like, Allah became annoying. Allah keep asking the same question. It's like a radio station. Do you know the Middle Eastern women who bought a CD to make a cake? You know this story? This is a true story, by the way. Sahih Bukhari. She brought a CD teaching her how to make a cake. And then she put it in the stereo, you know, and the CD is playing. It says, break an egg. Break an egg. Break an egg. She broke 30 eggs. The CD is still saying, break an egg. Break an egg. Break an egg. She called the husband, hurry up, send me more eggs. I, I, I will lose counting. 
he sent her like two you know tray of eggs break an egg break an egg break an egg anyway the end of the story the CD was stuck and the egg was broken Allah is a CD who is stuck break an egg break an egg break an egg and those guys who they are birds in paradise now they notice that this God is annoying he will not leave them alone so when they see that he will they will not be left alone without asking something look at this what kind of heaven this heaven is this reminds me when I was in the Philippines I went to a beach there's nobody there literally nobody I wake up in the morning before people go you know and there was a guy he stood behind me and he starts screaming balut 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 what the heck I look at him I hey buddy if balut is here he would answer a long time ago I mean he stood behind me there's nobody in the whole beach he said, sir, I'm not looking for a person. Balut is an egg. Do you want to buy some, sir? <laughs> and this is Allah, Mr. Balut. He keep asking them the same question. And they are now supposed to be in heaven. And the beach is empty. And he chased them. He keep asking, no, no. Tell me, you know, what, what do you like? What do you like? And Allah, like, come on, Allah, we don't want anything. Just leave us alone, man. But they notice that Allah will not leave them alone. It's like a scam coming to your door. He keep knocking. And then they tell their Lord that they wish him to return their spirit to their body so they will maybe be killed in his path once again. Look at this wish. <laughs> anyone understand what happened now obviously those guys they are desperate to leave the heaven <laughs> maybe maybe the Muslim they see it like yeah they want to die for the sake of Allah no don't you see it says he will not stop until he will not leave them alone so those Abdul they are asking Allah for the sake of Allah can you give us our body back and throw us in earth again we don't want your heaven, you idiot. We are willing to die again. Just give us our body and leave us alone. What a stupid religion. Like already you died once. And now you are in heaven and now you are desperate to leave the heaven. You won't just give me my body. It's okay. You know, I don't I want anything from you. Just please give me my body and throw me back. I want to die for you. Don't worry. I want to do jihad for your sake. What kind of what kind of comedy is comedy is? And who is a stupid fool want to believe in it? Mr. Bird. If you want to know how Osama bin Laden now look like, take a look. Should he look like Osama, to be honest with you? I don't know. Somehow. I'm not sure really. I mean the the mouth. Um I don't know. He looked a little bit different. There is there is some I'm really confused. Maybe maybe it's Osama. I don't know. Oh this guy he's not a green. Why are you green by the way? I mean there's a million color in the world. This guy he's stuck with look at this how beautiful this guy. Why not the red? Oh look at this guy, what he's doing. What the heck? What he is holding in his hand? Yellow yellow? You know the yellow is a is a special color for the for the uh, the Shia. Anyone knows what what is special about it? Who remember? Let us see if you guys remember. What? Why the color the yellow color is a special for the Shia? Anyone knows? Okay, if you according to the Shia, if you wear a black shoes. Your private part, your penis, will never function. If you wear a yellow shoes, your private part will be like boing, boing, boing. This is why the Shia, they 
are, like if you go to Baghdad, you will not find anyone buying black shoes unless he's an ignorant. They are the cheapest. But at the same time, who in the world want to wear yellow shoes? <laughs> And this is the lucky yellow bird. So you can imagine how good he is in bed. I mean, this guy is not only his shoes is yellow, everything about him is, is, is yellow. Unbelievable. True story, by the way. Look at this guy here. Yeah, this is this is now, this is almost a bird. Take beer. What stupid religion. Uh <clears throat> Yeah, black black shoes, they will make you weak in bed, you know. Don't wear black shoes. And you know, I was like saying to myself, what's my problem? What's my problem? What's my problem? And then one day I discovered that all my life I was wearing black shoes. <laughs> True story. Black shoes will make you... Uh, hmm. Oh boy. Are women wearing, you see, they don't talk about women, they talk about men. And like the Shia, they have their own, you know, crazy stuff. Like as an example, if you if you look at your wife, Enos, and you are having sex with her, your son or, or your whatever son or daughter will, will come and mute. She cannot talk or he cannot talk because you look at her Enos. You cannot look at her Enos. Haram! Haram! Okay? Yeah, they, they have you know the, the Shia they have a crazy stuff uh, if if your wife she is giving you birth only for daughters you spank her in her ass seven times when you are having sex and you say you yeah Ali each time you you spank her you say oh Ali oh Ali oh you have to spank hard by the way okay just to let you know then she will give birth to a boy be boy <laughs> But you remember Muhammad, he said that the one have orgasm first, the baby will be like resemble the. So just according to Muhammad, the Sunni, if you have a if you have orgasm first, the baby will be a boy like you if you are a man, or will be a girl like you if you are a female. Just have orgasm first. Yeah, but this is like a, the spanking is a is a good one, you know, like your wife. <laughs> Don't practice it tonight with your wife, okay? <laughs> Otherwise, you will have boys for the coming. Then boy, then then children you will have. They will be all boys. Spanky method, unbelievable. Crazy, you know, a crazy religion. Yeah, actually, I like the Shia. They have way more stupid stories than the Sunni, but the Sunni are no different. You know, I mean, they have their own fiction, but the Shia they fly too much. I mean, they are really, really too much high. Uh, like you know Ali he was in China and he was in Europe and he was in Damascus and he was in Mecca in the same time brother hmm. and Al Hassan he speaks 70 million language brother 70 million just only 70 million language eh, okay what you can do about it If I want to make a just a special program about the Shia, you will die laughing. <clears throat> if you remember, I made a video about why a, a person, a, why the, the Muslim, the, the Muslim Shia, they were speaking about the Sunni, why they are homosexual. Did anyone remember the video? He said that if he is a Shia, Allah will protect his anus from shaitan. But if he is a Sunni, the baby, when he is born, shaitan, he put his finger in his anus. And that will make will make him, which means will make every Muslim Sunni, a homosexual. This is the, uh, the logic. And... <laughs> Oh boy, hard to believe, isn't it?
And it's sad, by the way. I mean, we are in the year 2000, whatever. And then the people, they believe in this. And they go on TV. I mean, this guy, he has his program. His name is Yasser al-Habib. You know? And he explained and he moved his finger and he tell you how shaitan, he insert his finger in the anus, brother, in the anus of the Muslim Sunni. Thank God I am not a Sunni. <laughs> and you know, like one of the questions somebody asked me before, he said, what if somebody later he converted to be a Shia? He's already now shaitan, he put his finger in his anus. <laughs> Can that be fixed? You know, what if somebody one day, after, let's say, he become a dot or something, he become a Shia? And then the sheikh he's saying that when you are a child, shaitan, he insert his finger in your anus, and thus you will become a homosexual. Okay, what if this guy, when he grow up, he become a Sunni? Is Allah going to reverse what happened all this time? Oh boy. You know, actually, they have a story. Maybe I should make uh, some special video about the Shia. Remind me, maybe next week. Like, there is a, a story where the, the Shia, they believe that Ali, uh, he is one of the prophets uh, who suffer from things. Or he was the company of the prophets who have a from hard time or harsh time. So the, 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 the Shia, they believe that Ali was with Abraham when they tried to burn Abraham and he is the one who made the fire cooled down on Abraham. And Ali, he was with Noah in his ship in the flood time. And actually, he is the one who saved his ship from drowning. Like, look like there is a hole, you know. Uh, in the in the ship, and Ali is the one who blocked it. And Ali was with Isa, and he was with Musa. So when Musa he crossed the sea, Ali was with him too. So you know you like you will find uh, the the Shia. They have millions of stories beyond imagination. He's a time traveler. He is uh, Muhammad is time traveler too. Uh, I'm just trying to remember like some stories. Uh, oh, hold on. There's a verse in the Quran where Allah, he speak about uh, a mosquito. A mosquito. So he said, it's not, it's not like, uh, uh, it, it's not hard for Allah to give an example or a parable of a mosquito and higher, which means even if it's small, he can make a parable about it. The Muslim Shia, they believe that Ali is the mosquito. <laughs> and what is above it is, is the messenger of Allah. So Ali was a mosquito carrying the Prophet of Allah before they become human. Um, there's endless, you know, crazy stories. Oh boy. There's a story about Noah. Let me, I'm trying to remember what the story was saying. Um, I need to search for it because I, have, I forgot really. Yeah, I think what, what, what the story is saying that uh, Ali. He was with Noah in his ship, and then Noah, he come to Ali, 
and he put his hand over his uh, like he asked Ali to open his uh, hand you know and then he wiped his hand over the hand no he wiped his hand over the hand of Ali and then he says from the seed of this donkey a donkey will come and he will be uh, he will he will be rode by the master of the prophets and the seed of the prophet and here you ask yourself how in the world do you say such a thing how noah describing ali to be a donkey and from his seed other donkey is going to ride him actually let me let me try to find this reference as i mentioned it because somebody might say it's not true you know this is false let us search okay let's see yeah, there we go we found it and i will give you the link so in case they say this is not true this is the, the book of al-kafi al-kafi is the same as al-bukhari let's take a note this is equal to al-bukhari for the shia so if you go here down it says Uh, it says here from his father from his grandfather he mentioned that Ali speaking about Ali that he was with Ali uh, he was with Noah in the ship and then Noah he walked to him and he wiped his uh, uh, what they call the, the hand like the, the upper side of the like when you open your hand you know in the word in English anyway go go with translate so he wiped his hand and he said from this donkey a donkey will come and the master of the prophet will ride him and if you go here a little bit before it it says uh, that the first ones of the animals who died it was of fire you remember the uh, Yafur the donkey of the prophet who speak and Muhammad he spoke to him and he died right away when the prophet of Allah he died Uh, and then he you know he he uh, like what happened when he heard that the prophet he died the the donkey he broke his rope he was so angry and then he went to an empty well and he threw himself inside the well and by the way this is a Shia, this is a Sunni story too he threw himself this is a story exists in the Kathir he threw himself inside the well and he commits suicide you know and this is where he died and this is the well become his grave let me use Google Translation to end the drama. So here it says uh, that Noah, let's see where it says Noah. Yeah, here it's speaking about the donkey, how the donkey commits suicide. His name is uh, uh, Afir. Here they call him Afir. The Muslim, they, the Muslim Sunni, they call him Yafur. So this donkey, he throw himself in the well of uh, dry water. There's no water in it. He commits suicide when he heard the news that Muhammad, he died. And here the story is, uh, the translation is coming wrong. So uh, Noah, he came to uh, Ali and he said from this donkey, uh, from his seed uh, a donkey will come and will ride him the master of all the prophets you see out of his lions of this donkey come a donkey that the master of all of the prophets and their seal rides all right and then he says praise to to Allah who made me that donkey
<laughs> I mean, can you believe this? And again, this is the reference here. Uh, Al-Kafi, which is equal to Al-Bukhari for Ashia. Very number one, page number 237. Let me send you the link. I will shorten the link. I don't know if we can post it in Arabic. In the, actually, I mean the link as it is. Let me see. Uh, it didn't work. Actually, for some reason. Okay, hold on. Oh, it doesn't go. It says very long. Because there's Arabic font. Uh, let us see. Link shorten. Link. Create a short link. Okay, now we post it for you. And let me know if it work. You see it? So you know that the Shia, they have endless stories. They are crazy. I mean, I used to write, read them just for fun, you know, just for, for, you know, like you, sometimes you are, you want to feel better just for fun, just read them. Yeah. Uh, uh, and by the way, the, the Shia, they believe uh, that Ali, Excuse me, my language now. Don't 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 be upset. His real name is Pussy. <laughs> and his name is in the Injil is Elia. Elijah is Ali. In the Torah is Baraya. In India, his name is Kabur. In Rome, for the Roman, his name is Batrisa. For the Persian, his name is Jubair. For the Turkish, his name is Tapir. For the black people, his name is Haytar. And for the priest, they call him Pussy. <laughs> Excuse my language. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that is something, isn't it? That is something. And now for sure they will say to you it's a lie. So we better find the reference before they eat us alive. Let us see if I can find the reference. Hold on. Where are we going to find this now? Huh, here we go. Okay, let us close this one. And we take this one. Uh, this is the book of Bisharatul Mustafa, uh, page number 33. And we zoom out. This is the part. I'll use Google Translation. Here it says, and his name, like the, the priest, they call him Pussy. <laughs> Let us translate. Shall we? I mean, look how many names he have. So my name in the Bible is Elijah. Ali is Elijah. Take a note, please. Okay? So he's Elijah in the Bible. In the Torah, his name is Baraya. In the Zabur, his name is Ari. In India, his name is Kabir, for the Hindus. Uh, for the Roman, they call him Batrisa. Among the Persian, they call him Jubair. Among the Turk, they call him Taibar. And among the Zinj, they call him Haitar. And among the priest, they call him Busi. <laughs> No 
comment. It's not my fault. Don't don't hang me. I just read. None of my business. You know, I'm not the one who said it. I have nothing to do with it. I'm not responsible. <laughs> and this is the name of the book, Bishara al-Mustafa, which means the good news about the chosen one, Muhammad. Page number 33. And this is the Shia library here, the website, Shia library. This is a very Islamic website. And now let us give you the link. <laughs> well, English translation is funny how, how the word Busi is coming, you know, like Busi. You know. <laughs> Oh boy. I mean, I'm telling you, this religion is really crazy. I mean, the more, the more you study it, the more you go, you, you go not, you go crazy, literally. I mean, this beyond stupidity. And then you ask yourself, like, even those people do, even they read what is written in their books? Do, do they really read? So let me pause for you the link. Who won the link? This link is a prize. You have to pay for it. You, now I got you from your hands, all of you. You have to pay for this page. You like it, you're not. I got you. So his name is Elijah. I mean, they worship him, man. This Ali, he is their God. By the way, if you go to Iraq or to, to, to Iran and you laugh at Ali, as we are doing now, you will be dead in two seconds. Never do that there. I'm serious. Never, never, ever. There's, they will kill you immediately. Uh, yeah, let us make an auction. Who want to pay more to get this link? You know, halal link. Here we go. This is the link. You can open it and you can save it in your, yeah. So the priest, and the funny is, the one who call him the what word is the priest. <laughs> Look like the priest, they choose the correct word for him. And then among the Abyssinians, ba, 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 Batrik, Look at this guy, he have multi names. Man. How many people watch your debate live when you debate? Uh -uh, Sheikh Uthman. This guy would never dare to debate me. How he would debate me? He's a coward, he's potato. So do you see the stupidity of this cult? It's literally mental illness. This is how they think and what they think about Ali and Muhammad. And even the Shia, they believe that Muhammad and Ali and his children, they are light, they are not a human. So they were light in the forehead of Allah and they are made of light. They look like a human, but in reality, they are not a human. This is why the Shia, they are really, I mean, too much different uh, from the Sunni. They go farther in worshiping Muhammad and his family. Talk about the Sword of Ali, that will need another drama. The Sword of Ali is a different story. Ah, Hisham al Husseini. Yeah. Well, you know, like right away when you debate those potatoes, they start accusing you, you are Zionist, you are, you know, the potato. I mean, if you speak Arabic, just watch and die laughing. I think there is one of you, he made the subtitle for it. I forgot who. Uh, you can watch it with subtitle if you don't speak Arabic. Yeah, I mean, if this Uthman, he could not even handle good logic, and we cannot compare what I know about Islam and what good logic know, uh, how he can handle me. That's why they are intimidated. They would not dare even to speak to me. They knew. But even a kid, he was able to make him hummus. Let me see if I can find the reference about the, the yellow shoes. Who want to see the yellow shoes? And the black shoes. Let us see. So, <clears throat> I 
Okay, so this is the other hadith about the black shoes. I found it. Let me wait for you there. So this is a book. It's called Wasa'il Shia, volume number five, page number sixty-seven. Hadith number thirty-eight, or or story uh, issue number thirty-eight. The uh, it's hated to wear black. It's not haram. It is not likable. It's not right to wear a black shoe. Why? It says here. From 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 you know all the way to Ali. It says, he said to him. Uh, he looked at one of his companion and he he saw him wearing a black shoe. So he said to him, "What's up with you? And with this black shoe? Don't you know that a black shoe will make you lose your vision?" And will make your penis loose and it's more expensive than other shoes and nobody he wear it and he, he thought of himself highly all right and this is the same hadith here you know so uh, according to the story here if you wear a black shoe you will lose your vision and you will lose your penis let us use Google translation shall we guess you like it don't you when I'm going to go Today, I suppose I said to myself, I'm going to make a short video. I think I need to buy an alarm and put it here in front of me, like 45 minutes and done. So this is the reference, Wasai Rushia, part number five, very number five, page number 67. And here it says, uh, when he was walking with his companion, he said to him, he saw him, he looked at him, and his companion was wearing black black shoes. So he, he said to him, what's up with you and this black shoe? The translation is not too much. Accurate. He said to him, don't you know that it harm the eyesight and relax the penis? <laughs> so my friends, if any of you, she have a husband and he is not doing good job in the bed, I want you to go right now immediately and throw all his black shoes in the garbage. He woke up in the morning, he will not find one of them because now we knew the problem. Your husband is fine. He is just suffering the consequence and the symptoms and the side effect of wearing black shoes. And I'm sure now that we solve a lot of problems. And your husband, he do not need to buy any medication. He do not need to see any doctor. It was the black shoe conspiracy. Now I need to find the other hadith about the yellow shoe, but it should be here somewhere. Uh, where is the yellow shoe? And actually, if you read the second part, it says, and it will make you, uh, you, you will be anxious. You know, you will be anxious. They will be worried all the time. Just be why wearing the black shoe. All of this, all of those things happen because you wear a black shoe. Let me see page number 66. Yeah. Go to 68. Yeah, this one repeating the same thing. I'm just trying to find where we can find the, the yellow shoes here. Ah, here we go. Hmm. Um, but here is not talking much about sex with the yellow shoes. Let us see maybe the page after. Here it says, if you wear yellow shoes, you will be happy until you ruin it. All those pages about yellow shoes. 
Uh, if you wear if you wear a, a, like a light shoes, that will will prevent you from having. I don't know what the name of the virus. Uh, you know, it's a virus. You know, destroy your your lung. I forgot the name in English. Maybe somebody can help. Actually, we can use a Google translation. Hold on. So if you wear a light shoe, that prevent, where is the translation? Prevent. From tuberculosis. Is that the name of the disease? I don't know. This is what uh, Google is saying. Let us go to the other page about the uh, yellow shoes. See what shoes can do? All those shoes can, I mean, shoes can do a lot of things. So here he says, uh, if you wear, uh, if you wear shoes, uh, wearing slippers is safe from lepros <laughs> leprosy. You know what? I'm going to open a clinic just to teach you guys about health advice. You know, <laughs> so if you wear a slipper, you know, uh, if you're addicted to wear a slipper, that will will make you safe from leprosy. Uh, I mean, I wish you can speak Arabic. You would die laughing. I mean, the translation here is really horrible. Uh, let us see. Where is the yellow? This is here is just about wearing a slipper. Uh, so if you wear a slipper too, it's going to make a string in the side. Your your vision will be strong. See? How many of you are wearing glasses? You do not need the glasses, just you need to wear slippers. Take my advice, try it, it will be fine. Uh, <clears throat> where is the yellow thing? Let us see. I think we passed it. <clears throat> we have to go to the Arabic page. And let us see if we go to page number 75. <laughs> I don't know how I translate this one for you. So here is advising them not to wear uh, uh, one pair of shoes. So like you have to wear two shoes, each one of them from different pair. Why? If you do that, Shaitan, he cannot really get hold of you. So like you buy two shoes and you, you wear one shoe, one from the other shoe and one from the other shoe. This way, Shaitan, he cannot get hold of you. Uh, let us see here. It's a wisdom, you know, this is always wisdom. It's hard for you to understand. You know, you can understand, you aren't smart. I mean, all of them, they are comedy. Maybe we are, we are done with shoes here. Let me search because that's endless. That's mean I have to search all over. Let us see if we can find. <clears throat> you know, Google make things a lot easier. Uh, I'm getting sleepy. All right. 
sorry. And there is like white shoes, yellow shoes, black shoes. The black shoes is the worst. And if you wear uh, if you wear yellow shoes, uh, you will never lose money, and you will never lose a child. Yeah, I found the one. It says like wearing uh, yellow shoes will make you happy. Let us see. You see here, this one here, it says that the yellow shoes, he when he wear a yellow shoes, he will always be happy until the shoes like they are damaged destroyed like you keep wearing it until it's over and all the time i promise you you will be happy try it you know what i think that like imagine if you have a if you are trying to invest in the stock market how you can guarantee that the stock you are buying they will never lose wear the yellow shoes as long the yellow shoes mean you will ever be happy that means he will not lose. So it says here, the one who wear yellow shoes, he will still happy until he wear them out. Crazy religion, what you can say. And this is just little of, of millions of crazy stories. Yeah. Let us see. Yeah, that's enough for today. Otherwise, we will stay until tomorrow. Oh, man, I can't even. Uh, it hurt to sit in this chair for many hours. So now we are here for three hours and 40 minutes. Unbelievable. I said to myself, I will go for like 20 minutes, 15 minutes. You guys, what are you doing to me? Unbelievable. And look, not even nobody coming. Like we have only 700 people here. I think I should take like maybe a few days off. So you guys, you miss me and then you will come. Where is everybody? Three hours and nobody here? That's not fair for me. You guys don't appreciate my work, don't you? It's all right. The Lord is watching. So guys, I want to say thank you for being here. And uh, I hope that the ones who they are wearing black shoes will not come here anymore. They are not welcome. All right. We want here people who they are happy. With good spirit. Wearing yellow shoes. We don't want drama. Keep your drama for yourself. Black shoes is not allowed. So please, next time before you enter our chat, you take off your shoes if they are black you throw them you sell them you burn them this is your business but don't come with them enough is enough i'm losing my patient i don't want to see any black shoe here actually i'm going to force all of you from now on to open your camera and you don't want i don't want to see your face i want to see your shoes i want to be sure that all of you wearing yellow shoes happy people happy feet and now we know where the movie name coming from, Happy Feet. It was the yellow shoes. It turned to be that the secret of happiness is based on shoes. Wear yellow shoes. Advice of the century. Take my advice now, it's for free. Tomorrow will be costly. Because imagine if everybody heard this advice and they start buying yellow shoes. You will not find yellow shoes no more. Actually, maybe by tomorrow morning, you go to Amazon, you try to search for your shoes, you will find zero left. 
So before it's too late, save yourself, save your family. Your wife, she is a drama woman, give her yellow shoes. You come home, she's laughing. You don't have money, she's laughing. You are not going to work, she is laughing. Because now she is happy, subhanallah, because of yellow shoes. Your mother-in-law, she come to your house, she bother you, she annoy you, give her a gift, yellow shoes. She come to your house, she will never complain. She is happy. She leave your house, she is happy. She call her, her daughter, she is happy. So take, you have a boss who is very rude, very ugly, very bad, very cheap. Give him a gift, yellow shoes. He will be very generous with you. He will give you vacation even when you don't ask for it, before even you think about it. He will increase your salary. He will give you a vacation when it's time and when it's not time. Actually, he might say to you, stay at home. I will work for instead of you. Just give him yellow shoes. My friend, can we give yellow shoes to Joe Biden? Imagine if we give yellow shoes to Joe Biden. What will happen in this country? I mean, now the inflation is like crazy. The shelves are empty and people can't afford to buy food. If we give yellow shoes to Joe Biden, and then he duplicate and he give every American yellow shoes. Who is going to suffer? Nobody. The whole nation is happy. You go in the street, everybody is high. I mean, not from drugs, but the hell yellow shoes will make different. We can change society. It is time for a change. Yellow shoes is the best. And forget about the rest. Face it. Take it or leave it. It's an advice will not be repeated twice. And we just made Quran. And uh, he left as a donkey and he will come back as a horse. Thank you very much for being here. May the Lord bless you and see you soon again. Maybe I should take a break so you guys can miss me. Maybe. Because I need to look for shoes. I'm not happy now with this number. Look, how many? If I have your shoes, I will not complain. It's your fault. It's your fault. Nobody warned me before. I just turned. True story. Take care. Hello, everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and let us have some good time together. I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran is mentioned, if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. As holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is after all why they crucified him.